A lot of fun to be out there. It's good to be back out there because um, we split the practice. Uh, you know, uh, a couple guys cramped up a little bit, so I, I actually got to take some reps. So that was good. Uh, highlight film t t coming out soon, so you'll see it. Um, but no, it was great to be back out there. Very grateful for all the guys and the hard work they put in the summer to put them in this position. So it was really, really a lot of fun to be out there. Um, as you guys all know, unfortunately, uh, you know, uh, Bob um, uh, Wager uh, resigned earlier this week. So i uh, really grateful for him for the time he spent here. Um, you know, unfortunate situation. I know he took responsibility for it, and I appreciate him for doing that. Not a lot of men would have handled it the way he did. Um, and, you know, I don't judge people by their tough moments or worst moments. I always judge them how they respond. I really appreciate him, and I'm thankful for him. I mean, it was a short time, but he brought some recruits here. He brought some of his kids here, so I appreciate him and wish him and his family the best. Uh, he's a great coach. I know he'll do great things. And then I, you know, I know obviously last night, it, you know, got out a little bit. Some of the guys that weren't there, um, you know, I was hoping to address that today instead of yesterday, just to keep the focus on the guys. But um, um, I do understand you guys have a job to do. So um, I'm just trying to think of the guys. Brody Tagaloa. Unfortunately, Brody was in a, 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 a traffic incident, a car accident, a single car accident. Uh, a couple, a couple, maybe about a week ago, a couple weeks ago, um, he's home in California with his family, uh, recuperating. I FaceTimed him last night, um, and so he's, uh, you know, had had a, had had a cut to his face, had a, uh, had to have surgery on his knee. We expect him to miss the year, unfortunately. Brody was coming along great, but he's got a bright future, and good things will happen for Brody. So uh, he's with us. He's just home with his family, recuperating uh, post the accident. Uh, Jacob Hood, uh, just Jacob's just dealing with some chronic ankle stuff. Um, so, you know, he's uh, kind of a little bit more in just sort of uh, a rehab mode right now. Um, that's why he wasn't there last night. He was, he was meeting with the doctors. Um, Miles Farmer. Um, Miles was suspended to end the summer by us uh, just for um, s simple things, nothing, nothing major, just, you know, sort, sort of some of our standards. And was not a member of the 120. So we'll, we'll wait and see how that all plays out. And uh, who was it? And then, uh, you know, Josh Fleeks reported yesterday and was uh, significantly over his uh, weight, so he was sent home to um, make his weight. So um, we'll wait and see how Josh does. So um, with that, uh, so that should be about all the housekeeping. Maybe there's a couple other things you guys have. Let's see what questions you have. Uh, will you replace anybody to, or will you hire somebody to replace Josh Martin? You yeah, we've talked about it. You know, um, we don't want to move too quickly, you know. I mean, I don't want to, I, I always say, like, hurry up and wait. Like, I don't want to rush. But, um, you know, Ed's been doing this a long time, and, you know, now like, he actually has Josh now helping him on the field, so it's a little bit, it's a little bit of a blessing in terms of special teams-wise, whereas Josh before couldn't talk. Now he's able to out there and coaching the punt team with Ed. So, uh, but we'll probably at some point, whether it's someone internally, uh, we'll probably hire somebody. How rare is it to have a guy that like him that already has Division I position coach experience is kind of waiting in the wings on the staff? Yeah, you know, when we first hired Josh, I remember um, – uh, one of the analytics companies, you know, sending me, signing like, hey, you know, great hire and all the things he had done. Um, and we've just been nothing but impressed with Josh since then, you know. Uh, we've had Christian Ellsworth in that room, and Christian's a really talented young coach. So it's, you know, kind of been a blessing to have him in there. But, uh, you know, Josh has done it. He's done it at two places. He's had guys go on to the NFL. And, uh, you know, I went out and watched his indie today uh, with the young guys, and um, you could tell he's been coaching a long time. So um, our whole plan and kind of building the staff – well, differently than maybe it's been done here before, was having a bunch of guys waiting in the wings. So as guys have opportunities and move on, or unfortunately in a situation like this, we have guys here. We don't have to go out and you know hire some you know someone new. We can go out and hire guys uh, within the organization that you know that know our systems and understand our way of life. Hey, Matt, can you speak to the, the structure that you use today with the young guys and what the benefit of that is? For you? Yeah, I mean, you probably remember way back when I was a player, like we, we reported and we have like five days, like freshmen had five days. And so I, I don't remember who I took it from. Maybe it was like Willie, Willie Taggart or someone along the way. And so uh, every year's been a little different, Mitch. Like some years we don't, you know, we don't have a big freshman group and we haven't done it. Or sometimes it's four days, sometimes it's three days. But, you know, you, you can even kind of tailor the play calls for them. So we were able to be a little bit slower with them, a little bit more methodical with them. Um, and it wasn't, there were some older guys that came down just to get reps. But the most important thing to me is reps. Um, you know, as I told the young guys at the end, a lot of places in the country, the freshmen showed up and they got five reps in practice today, but our guys all got 40. So it's just, it's just, it's just kind of what Coach Osborne told me, like, you know, make sure they all get reps. And um, it's, it's a little bit of a strain on, you know, the coaches and the staff because, you know, you're having to be out there for a little bit longer, but, you know, it's fun. And it's good to see them, their personalities, right? You see Chubba now goes from being kind of one of the young guys. Now Chubba's the 
vet out there leading that third offense. And uh, you see guys, you know, you see the guys as freshmen sort of start to, who's a leader, who's got some juice to them. So it's really good to see. Um, I can't, I got to tell you, I'm really happy with the young group we have, the freshman group. Like, they are fast. I mean, they are really, really fast. Their movement skills, you know, Ed and I were talking out there, like, our special teams, um, it's going to be a battle to get on those special teams because we have a lot of guys who can really run and move that want to play. How exactly was it divided up then? How, how did you make the split? Yeah, we, we, we tried to divide it as close to half as we could, right? So if we had, you know, I, I'm trying to think of a – like we divided the wide outs. I think we divided them like nine and eight or eight and eight. So it wasn't only the young guys, just most of the young guys were in the young group. Some older guys had to go down and help out. But for them – Instead of running with the second group and the up, they now they get to run with the first group, right? So um, we try to divide it even. We only have we had 18 offensive linemen available today, so we went with 10 in the first group and eight in the second group. And those guys in the second group just had to rotate through. I was at night one dorm. Do you have a roommate as well over there? Oh, I don't have a roommate. No one wants a room with me. Uh, I'll, I'll be honest. First of all, I'll say this: like the dorms are really nice. Okay, like I was kind of hoping for like a little bit more of like a. Cot, no. When they had air conditioning, I was like, this doesn't count. But um, so credit to uh, University Housing; it's really a pretty place. And um, I'll just say, I, I really appreciate, and I really mean this, our, our the housing people because they have gone, they've bent over backwards to help us. And um, um, I love it. Now I'll say I'm cheating. Okay, I have married housing over there, or like the RAs room. So I have a little bit nicer room than some of the ones I saw on social media yesterday. So I feel a little bit bad, but not that bad. Um, <laughs> But yeah, it was really nice. It, I, it was so much fun this morning to kind of wake up and just walk over there and walk through East Stadium and come right to work, man. It was it was pretty cool. How many people are in the dorms right now? All, well, so even some guys that are like, some, some guys are not in the 120, like Buford and Meshachak and those guys, but they're here rehabbing. So we probably have like 125 players maybe, 124 players. Our entire strength staff, so whatever that is, eight, because it's including the interns. And then all the coaches, except um, I told our two coaches over 60, they did not have to stay, Ron Brown and Coach McGarry. I don't even, they might be staying in there, I don't know, but I told them they didn't have to. And then uh, a couple trainers and an ops person. So we probably have probably have 160 people in that dorm. Why is it so important to you to do that? Um, well, I Hey, I want to, I want our whole team to get comfortable being uncomfortable, right? Like, like they're not allowed to leave campus without permission. Like, like we told them, like, don't tell me your dog needs walked or da da da. Like you're here. Um, so I think for me, it's like we just have to get comfortable with new things. Um, but more importantly, like we're trying to build brotherhood, right? And so we're trying to build the sense of common purpose by getting to know each other. So having those guys over there, you know, Gus and his people put a bunch of board games and cards, hoping that they'll maybe get off their phone and <laughs> talk talk to each other. And then, you know, we don't just play for ourselves. We don't just play for the football team. We play for the University of Nebraska and the state of Nebraska. And so returning to the heart of campus to me is really important. Um, so, I, I, you know, I think it's that. And so it, it kind of divides camp up, right? You're in the dorms for two weeks. Then you have a week of kind of being at home coming in. Then school starts, and then we have 10 days before the first game. So sort of a, this two-week grind. And, um, you know, I thought the dorm, like I said, I thought the dorms would be a little bit harder. They're pretty nice. What's the timeline on What's the timeline on? Um, I, I don't know. It's just kind of day by day, you know. Um, you know, like I said, the, you know, I, I love Miles. He's he's a competitive kid. He's, it's so hard when you have a new coach, right? And they have different standards than you're used to. So I get that, right? Um, we've been patient with a lot of guys, you know. Um, we'll see what happens with Miles, right? You'll see what happens, and you know, we'll see. You know, like I said, he, the ball's in his court. I mean, um, would love him to be here, but you know, if, you know, whatever whatever he wants to do, um, I respect him as a man. So whatever he decides, I understand. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's the one distinguishing really good characteristic. I mean, they're all, I mean, they're, like I said, they're they're all. I mean, they get they're getting a lot of reps, and they're probably not used to it. So there's a lot of guys kind of trying to catch their breath. I think they're, they're in pretty good shape. Um, they're pretty knowledgeable. You know, the challenge to them, I, all young players want to play. The number one thing that keeps young players from playing is their knowledge of the playbook. Uh, it just it slows them down, right? So I begged them at the end of practice, like, this no, this is not my phone, but I was like, this will not help you play. Like, the, every minute you spend on this phone or playing the game does not help you play. Like, study your playbook. So that's the hardest thing. Like, very few guys will actually do it. Just just is what it is, right? Like, um, so, you know, but the ones who do, there will be a couple of freshmen that will really buy into it and they'll study it. And they'll be on a mission to play and they'll help us because the young players, 
we're going to win with the older players, but the young players can help us. Is that your first time on the new grass? Yeah, um, I walked across it once or twice, but that was my first time to be out there. They did a great job. Um, even just standing on it, like it's just how, how much better it is to stand on it, like landing on it when you fall down. And like I said, the safety is, they, they did a great job. Uh, Nemo Hawk came in and did it. Um, and uh, our, you know, Alex and his team here have done a good job of getting the field ready to go. Yeah, so, so, so Marcus has a um, broken bone in his hand. Um, uh, they suffered in the summer. And so um, we think that they'll take the cast off on Monday and he'll be splinted and able to practice on Tuesday. So today he did all the movement running stuff and then uh, went over with the uh, return to play guys and just ran and stayed in shape. So um, um, unfortunate for him, but he'll be back next week. Matt, Nick Kenner was up here. He said he didn't know if he'd play again after that injury last year. What have you seen from a guy like him? Did he get back on the field and be a part of it? Yeah, I think Nick has a, a really uh, he has a great spirit about him. You know, he's uh, he plays for the right reasons. He cares about his teammates. Um, again, I'm one of those coaches I always kind of – focus on like the four or five guys that are being a problem and I have to every once in a while stop and look at guys like Nick who are overcoming and doing everything right so if you ask the team like who, who leads and who, who they trust and all those things they're all going to say Nick and um, um, so you know it's a lonely road when you tear your ACL I mean you, you kind of wonder am I ever going to be able to play again right am I ever and then when you do come back to play you're always wondering like is it going to go again right so um, there's a lot of faith involved like you know hey I trust this process will work I trust the trainers will work but you're getting up at 5 30 in the morning all winter in the pitch black walking across campus when it's cold to show up and rehab so to see him out there is, is pretty cool right to see him out there and um, uh, you know I, I hope he I hope he has a great year um, but to me he's already won because you know, again, he went through adversity and he's battled back, and his his he's got a triumphant spirit, man. He's he, he I, I know he inspires guys on our team. And some of the uh, veteran players today, the energy and enthusiasm and retention is where you want to be practicing. Oh yeah, I thought they were great. Yeah, I thought they were great. I was really pleased with everything. Um, you know, it's just you can run all summer, but till you put a helmet on and and that, and then you take reps. And again, like we're not standing around very much. There's you know even in. A split team, so there's 60 guys out there, probably 55 guys out there were had two drills going with 55 guys. So they took reps nonstop. So they were at the end, they were you know they were they were gassed a little bit, which is good, right? But we were only out there with them for about 100 an hour and 35, 40 minutes. Um, so uh, you know they're, they're they're so focused. I mean the, the older guys here are really focused, and uh, I think they're sick and tired of being sick and tired. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, as I said to them, like. All we're trying to do is earn the right to walk into Minnesota with confidence. That's all we're trying to earn it. Like, one thing about being in Nebraska, it's, it's a great place, but, like, we're all given a lot. Like, people care about us. Like, the, the Trev gives us all this stuff. Like, we have scholarships. Some guys have NIL stuff. We, we get a lot of stuff, but they don't give you wins. You've got to earn wins. They don't give you wins. That You have to earn wins. And so um, I like the way that they, they have, like, a sense of, like, hey, let's get this done. And... You know, let's not talk about. Let's just talk about today. So I was pleased. I, was, I had a lot of fun out there with them today. I really did. One more. Are there guys eager to eager to get in get inside here in their new locker room. I mean, I know that there's delays. And, uh, I'm not sure what's yeah. happened, but what, what are the? What are the I, I had one of them ask me today. Hey, coach, when are we getting in here? You know, like uh, I think they know enough. Not to, you know, I'll, they know I'll probably say like just worry about you know. But um, I mean, I, I've been down there. It's gorgeous. It's it's like even in the last week, it's made some real jumps. So, you know, you know, I'm being patient, right? Like when we move in, we move in. The worst thing in the world would be to move in when, before it's ready. And, I mean, they're working around the clock to get it done right. So um, the rain probably hasn't helped. The, the rain's been great for the state. <laughs> I don't know if it's helped us in terms of the turf field and all that stuff. So we will take the crops over our turf field, though, let me say that. So, um, you know, maybe by the end of camp we'll have, some guys, we'll have guys moved in. Um, but, uh, and I, you know, I'm anticipating as a coach, I'm anticipating just working out of my office up here so whenever day they tell me to move over, so that's a pretty cool office too. So someone else had something. I'm sorry. I was just going to ask, you know, you've been through the first days before. What did today's first day feel like for you personally, and and more in the end, being out there when it's fall camp? Yeah, I was really um, um, calm and peaceful today. Like I, I really felt a sense of like just calm. Like um, for my, you know, this is for my day one of coaching a team in fall camps, my fourth time being a head coach and having to be day one. Um, these guys are just way further along than, you know, they just understand what we're asking them to do. And the staff has done a great job. Like, you know, Susan's worked every day this summer to get them. And Garrett McGuire didn't go on vacation. He stayed every day this summer. So, like, 
they're just so much the team's so much further along in terms of understanding what we're asking that it just made me, you know, I'm not out there having to be a maniac making sure every drill's like they understand where it's supposed to be. So um, I, I just got I have to give a lot of credit to the players. I mean, they really worked this summer. Um, and I'll say one thing: I, I think Billy spoke today, Billy Kemp. Like, I mean, like, he's an edgy, tough, feisty dude. Like, someone someone wants to jump me, and I see Billy, I'm saying, hey, Billy, will you help me out? Like, he's a guy I'm taking into a, a dark alley with me. Um, but I watch him out there with the players in the summer, and I watch him coach those guys every single – he's always pulling a guy over and saying, hey, let me talk – so our young players are pretty much further along because of the culture of our older players here. And, uh, you know, I really appreciate that. Okay. All right, thanks, guys.